Dear colleagues, thank you for inviting me to present the working group Archaeology and Gender in Europe at this round table discussion. First, I would like to introduce the working group Archaeology and Gender in Europe, in short H, to you. Afterwards, I will briefly look back at the history of age, which has now existed for seven years, and will give some prospects. Finally, I would also like to make some suggestions how working groups in general could be made more visible and therefore be able to get more colleagues interested and get more members. Currently, the working group consists of 65 members from 15 countries. Here, not only European countries are represented, but also the US and Iran. The board of the working group consists of three co-chairs who shall be from different countries and shall represent different academic traditions. We also aim to have universities, museums and heritage management equally represented in the board. The board is built on a rotation system of three co-chairs which was one elected every year at the age meeting during the EAA annual conference. At the conclusion of the EIA conference, the longest serving co-chair retires unless re-elected. At the moment, the board of HR, Nona Palinkas from Romania, Nancy Wicker from the US and myself, Nona and Nancy are also both here in the room. As I am currently the longest serving co-chair, I am going to be replaced by a new elected one who will be presented at our business meeting this afternoon. The working group has its area of concern in the discussion of gender issues in um, European archaeology, where gender is considered both as a st structural element to be studied in the past and as influencing research in the present. It will thus address the study and understanding of gender arrangements in the past mm -hmm. and the study and understanding of how current gender systems affect archaeology as an academic and professional practice. The main aim of this working group is to develop a formal and permanent European network of gender archaeology. While gender networks in many different scientific fields are now consolidated across Europe, and in spite of more than three decades of gender archaeology, a permanent forum for promoting and debating this field is still lacking within European archaeology. The aims for the EIA Archaeology and Gender in Europe Working Group are, well, you'll see it also here on the slide, first, promoting and encouraging gender and feminist archaeology as a consolidated research area, Second, establishing gender and feminist archaeology as a part of the archaeological curriculum. Third, expanding and promoting the theoretical foundations of gender and feminist archaeology in order to encourage new thinking about its significance. Fourth, creating a meeting place and a discussion platform for scholars interested in gender and feminist studies in archaeology and related disciplines. Fifth, communicating um, research on gender archaeology on both <coughs> scholars and the general public. Sixth, creating opportunities for collaborative research related to gender archaeology across <coughs> Europe. Seventh, discussing specific research topics related to gender and feminist archaeology in the framework of the EIA annual conferences and aid to promote gender equity in archaeology. To achieve these aims, we organize an age session at every EIA annual meeting. Here, all age members are asked to contribute their ideas. This year's age session on feminism and materiality in archaeology, for example, was organized by Tove Jorndal and Christina Fredegrin, both from Sweden, 
and Sylvia Tomaskova from the US. Additionally, we have an age business meeting at every EAA annual meeting. This year it will take place in the afternoon, today in the afternoon, and is open to anyone interested in our work. Well, as you see here, it will start at 14.30 in the Faculty of History. We have also the website where the actions of the working group are announced and the members of the working group are listed so that every member can easily get in touch with other members. Networking within the working group is very important for us as gender archaeology is still a quite small field within archaeology. Most networking occurs through the web page, where the members of age can get in touch with other age members through the members list, or can share their work on gender archaeology by putting papers or references on our reference site. In addition, the annual age meeting at the EAA conferences, the age business meeting, as well as the age sessions, are very important to discuss age-related issues and research questions in gender archaeology face-to-face. -face. Though this platform provided by the EAA is also very important for our working group. Sometimes it is necessary to have much more time to discuss an issue um, than the circumstances at the EAA annual meeting can provide for the working group. In such cases, age members have organized inter-EAA age meetings to which all members are invited, but usually only a few can attend. Those meetings had been used, for example, to prepare proposals for collaborative research projects or to discuss the structure and organization of the working group itself. The age sessions from whom you see here the list of topics we have um, attended. All of the sessions are organized by or were <coughs> organized by different age members, have covered a broad variety of topics within gender archaeology. The working group is committed to the publication of the age sessions. Most of the presentations, for example, of the first age session in 2009 can be downloaded from the H website, while other H sessions are currently in the process of being published as books. <coughs> the proposal for a EAA working party on gender and archaeology in Europe arose from the EAA session Gender, Identity and Materiality, celebrated in Malta 2008. In two more meetings between 2008 and 2009 EAA conferences, discussions were held and the proposal for the EAA Working Group Archaeology and Gender in Europe was prepared. The first official action of AGE was the organization of a round table session by the same name on Archaeology and Gender in Europe at the 2009 EAA meeting. In Tune with our goals, we invited speakers from seven different European countries to present their views on the professional situation of women archaeologists working in Europe and their views on what gender archaeology should be. After that, H has organized sessions on various topics, as you have seen on the slide before, at each EIA annual meeting, as well as other conferences. Age has grown slowly but steadily over the years. The website, the age sessions and meetings at the EAA conferences as well as the inter-EAA age meetings helped very much to establish a vivid working group with strong connections among its members. Communication within the working group and between the group members is working quite well. Nevertheless, we feel the need to be more visible for colleagues inside the European Association of Archaeologists, as well as for, other working, for others working on gender outside the EAA and or outside archaeology. Therefore, the last slide is dedicated to some suggestions about how working groups can be made more visible. 
How can we make the work of the working groups more visible and therefore make it easier for the working group to find more colleagues interested in its work? The first suggestion is a rather simple one. That sessions that are organized by a working group should be made marked as such in the program of the conference. In past years, in case of age, sometimes this was done and the marking was very eye-catching, sometimes it was very subtle or it did not work. However, we have the feeling that age-marked age sessions attracted more attention. We also organize an age business meeting at every EAA conference. Every year we must discuss when would be a good time for the age meeting. Therefore, we believe it would be nice to have a designated time slot when all EAA working groups have the possibility and the rooms to have their meetings. Perhaps the afternoon of the day of the opening ceremony would be a possible time slot. If such a time slot could be established, EAA members who are interested in the work of a certain working group could predict when the next meeting will take place and therefore plan their travel and their attendance to the conferences according to it. Working groups are usually asked to give short reports of the previous year's work at the annual business meeting of the EAA. It is of course important to include the working groups at the annual business meeting, but unfortunately the reports had often been shortened or skipped due to lack of time. Besides, only a certain group of EAA members usually attends the annual business meeting and therefore the work of the working groups is only presented to a limited audience there. <coughs> therefore, our last suggestion would be to have a poster session, either in addition to the report of the working groups at the annual business meeting or instead of it, where the working groups can present their work to the conference attendees and attract more colleagues interested in our work. I would like to thank my two co-chairs, Nancy Wicker and Nona Palinkisch, for comments and suggestions to, to this presentation, and I would like to thank you for your attention.